Hi, and welcome to Indie Learning Music Tutor, and I'm your tutor, Harry. Uh, today we're going to talk about arpeggios and how they show up on the board, um, the fretboard. Uh, so, uh, first things first, uh, an arpeggio basically is the outline of a chord. If you remember from the handout that I uh, gave out with the harmonization lesson, the uh, chord tones are what make up the arpeggio. So uh, for the C major scale, which was in the uh, example, you have C, E, G, B. Um, and uh, you could follow the same formula uh, for any other uh, uh, chord. Uh, if you go with the second degree, the scale tone from D, you have D, F, A, C, all right? So, uh, that being uh, said, we're going to get to the meat and potatoes of this, of how we finger these things on uh, our fretboard. As far as fingering arpeggios are concerned, uh, and this is the meat and potatoes of uh, uh, playing for a bass player, uh, this is also the meat and potatoes of uh, uh, any melodic playing, so uh, lead guitar, what have you. Um, so we're going to start with C on the first finger position. This is called the first finger position because we use our first finger, the index finger. It goes on the C and then we slide up, well we shift up to the E then our second finger goes to the G and our first finger goes to the B. The, the classical clinical arpeggio, we're going to be hearing it a lot. Um, the second finger position is called that because it starts on the second finger right here. C, E, G, B, C. And the fourth finger position, you guess it, it's on the little pinky. Now normally this would be a first finger, but because it's an open string, Right? Um, the reason why we have these different fingerings for the exact same arpeggio is because we are not always going to be in the exact same spot. Um, when we play, it's dynamic. We'll, we'll be moving around the fretboard. So if you wind up over here and you're playing over a C chord, um, if you were, let's say, playing like an A minor, You see how I just gave you guys a an arpeggio right there, a triad, or a triad arpeggio, but an arpeggio nonetheless, because this and this is the same. So instead of going um, why would we do that instead of going with where we're at? Uh, and that's why we try to have uh, multiple fingerings for the same thing. Uh, so that is the, the major arpeggio, our root, third, fifth, seventh, octave, seventh, fifth, third, root. Now we're going to work on the minor arpeggio. Uh, the minor arpeggio uh, as explained in harmonization, we're going to go right off of C. We're going to go to the flat third, fifth, flat seventh. And this is the first finger. Um, 
um, yeah, this is the first finger permutation. So C, E flat, G, B flat, C, B flat, G, E flat, and C. First finger, fourth finger, third finger, first finger, third finger, first finger, third finger, fourth finger, first finger. Um, so that's the first finger position for minor. Um, now, as far as a second finger position for a minor chord, um, there really isn't a, a second finger because it involves shifting. You could do it like this. but it's not really economical. If we scoot up over here to 8th fret, um, what we can do with the minor chord is 4th finger, 2nd finger, 1st finger, 4th finger, 1st finger. Okay, so C, E flat, G, B flat, C, B flat, G, E flat, C. Um, so really, realistically speaking, uh, for general usage, uh, you have your first finger, and you have your fourth finger. Um, now, for the dominant chord, uh, the dominant chord, the only difference between the dominant chord is instead of using the B as a seventh, you use the flat seventh that you would use in a minor chord. So our first finger permutation would be C, E, G, flat seven, so B flat, C, B flat, G, um, E, and C. Okay, now for the um, the second finger position, it's exactly the same. It's second, first, fourth, but now we're going to go second, fourth. So it's the same as the the major chord, except instead of using third finger, we're going to use fourth finger and go a fret down. Uh, sorry. Instead of using third finger, we use second finger and go fret down. Um, and for the fourth, uh, the fourth finger arpeggio, we can still do it here, just like before. Um, C, B would normally be first finger, but it's open string. Um, B flat, C, It's a little better when you have the C directly under your fingers um, instead of going. 
back and forth like that. Um, and the final arpeggio uh, that has to do with the major scale tones, uh, uh, the major chord tones, is uh, the minor seven flat five. Now that would be only the seventh chord on the G on the C major, which would be a B. Obviously, it's B, D, F, A, B. But we're going to listen to it in a, a C scenario. So instead of G being our fifth, it's going to be uh, F sharp being our fifth, or G flat. So uh, C, E flat, G, uh, F sharp, B flat, you can see how it has like a different texture to it. Um, and uh, that's first finger position. Uh, second finger position, it's the same as uh, with the minor chord, I really don't use it. But you know, it's it's possible. Or you could go with like a third finger position. Uh, but it's it's kind of weird, so I don't generally do that. Uh, fourth finger position is usually where I go with this. Um, fourth finger, second finger, you're gonna, um, sorry, fourth finger, second finger, you're gonna have to stretch a bit to get to your third finger. The, uh, the seventh chord doesn't come up very often because it's so dissonant, so uh, it's not a tragedy that it's uh, a difficult one to get under your fingers, but uh, as far as playing is concerned, it's always a good idea to have a very well-rounded uh, toolbox. So uh, for this, uh, for the exercises for this, my suggestion first and foremost is going to be uh, work on the arpeggios and, and start working on them one at a time. You can move them around um, uh, the fretboard to get familiar with every place there is a C. Let's, or, let's start with G. Um, uh, there's a G here. here uh, so on and so forth um, I don't do arpeggios off of bottoms unless I'm doing inversions but that's another lesson for another time um, I guess you could do it off of this G Okay, so we have all of that. Um, uh, our next uh, exercise is then to do it with uh, minor chords. Uh, uh, we're going to do the minor seven. And just get it comfortable under your fingers. Uh, do, do, you know, the first finger position. Do fourth finger position. Uh, same with uh, our, our major. Make sure you're getting all of your finger positions. In. So that you're comfortable using them anywhere. Uh, the more comfortable you are with uh, changing finger positions around, the sooner you're going to be able to play anything anywhere on the fretboard. It's, it, it's really that simple. Um, 
you train your brain to just see the arpeggios where they lay under your hand and where your hand can go and maintain that arpeggio. Uh, the idea is that you'll be able to transfer between arpeggios going up and down and I, I still need to work on this I'm, not, I'm going to be completely honest with you guys that uh, that uh, music's a journey there are certain things that uh, we focus on and there are certain things that we don't no one is a master of all things in music uh, uh, especially me so to be completely fair um, uh, I practice this stuff every day and I'm not Blazing fast, like like some of uh, some of the the best and brightest uh, recording artists out there. So we have those two exercises. Um, uh, also, you know the dominant. In all of its inversions, uh, all of its uh, fingering pa uh, patterns. Now I'm just using G because it's higher up and my second G is still higher up so I can I can actually show all of them to you guys. Uh, but you can feel free to work with this in C because you have the cheat sheet, the one I gave you. Um, and also the uh, minor seven flat five. So work on those arpeggios, get them together. Um, the next uh, video from the series from this is going to be uh, working on the uh, arpeggio going up and down the neck through the scale itself. Um, I'll give you guys an idea of what that's like. Um, so there you go, that's uh, running the scale via arpeggios up the whole neck. That's going to be something we'll, we'll work on uh, next time uh, when we uh, delve a little deeper in harmonization of the major scale. Uh, so this has been Harry Felker at Indian Learning Music Tutor, and uh, thank you for joining us.